Hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke saying hi, how you doing? I'm reaching out to you to basically talk to you more about the Proxmox Mini PC Cluster Technology Format and Footprinting. Now, so far we've gone through quite a bit with this. We've profiled hardware, we tested the hardware, then we built out the cluster, the Proxmox Cluster, with five nodes. And we've done all the preliminary requirements saying, hey, now we can go forward. But at the same point in time in this process, we have the other part, which is kind of kind of fun, you know, reinventing kind of thing, if you know what I mean. And that's the whole point of doing all of this is to have some fun, right? So with that being said, the strategy here is to take a basic PC component and come up with a couple of different formats, no more than two or three. That you, which you could work with. Now, the one strategy behind this is we take what is as is, and that's option one, has the least amount of impact, and it has the least amount of overall need for major configuration, cutting of metal, shredding, and stuff like that. Um, I'm always about keeping it simple and keeping it um, as easy as possible. So let's try to tackle that right now and just start with option one. So option one is basically the cluster nodes themselves built, built on a self-sustaining supportable rack, right? Using tier set screws, which are the strong screws, not the flimsy C-clamp screws. And then using a combination of Velcro and stabilizers, L-bracket stabilizers to be exact, to hold these units in place as you can see here and the velcro will keep it stationary and the top plate is another piece of velcro that will be placed up here but it will be at the mid level behind the rack level itself and this affords basically pressure down on these five units one being the cluster node controller and the four individual nodes that are added to that cluster and this format is very simple to work with. It's clean, airflow is strong and functional, but the units are restricted. And what I mean by restricted is, as you can see back here, they're still in their complete housings. Now, what does that equate to basically? Well, that uh, the spec of the temperature rating for these mini PCs are exactly that, that which matches the projection for the normal model. Now, we can change that. You know, this is nice and pretty looking, right? But that's not our goal. We don't want to be pretty necessarily. We want to be functional. So with that being the case, maybe I can change this format a little bit to make it even more functional. Like, let's say, eight nodes instead of just five. Now, I need to provide mathematically the right airspace around each of the units to respect the airflow necessary to maintain them. Okay? But if I open these chassis up and begin to expose the internals I'm actually able to produce a little bit more effect and also create new headaches at the same time it's a duality thing if you know what I mean anyways so let's see what that would look like okay so option two is basically free the airflow and as you can see because I'm restricting the aspect of the blades to a little bit closer spacing I've also provided more air exchange ratio for the fans as you can see them right here to do what they need to do and that is to be basically a good contiguous style airflow you know where the where the, the heat links in with the cold and they're linking up and they flow a lot better now the thing about these chassis lids is they're designed to create what's called a rush effect but this only works for the processor. If I want to use, granted, it won't be a great deal of, of return, but if I want to use the GPUs as well, that are inside these um, chassis, it's going to generate a little bit more heat. And I've tried it, and it does get a little warmer. So I'm taking the lids off, and this allows me to give more functional spacing for airflow, while at the same point in time giving me back even more space for more blades. When you approach close to roughly, I would say, three more blades, and we have a total of eight blades in the equation, one controller and, and seven nodes, then you're actually starting to see a little bit of power consumption 
between the SSD drives on board and the higher RAM ratio and CPU. And if you're using an operating system that can use advanced power management or APM to bring some of that down, just remember also that your SSDs, um, unless you kind of tweaked them out like I've done and you put in these little tiny um, aluminum wafers to help dissipate heat and then put them back together so they'll fit nicely inside the, the bay feeds, the here, uh, they'll generate a little bit of heat as well. Uh, if you're using them continuously, like you would like a server, then understand that basic PC SSD drives do tend to get a little bit more worn out over time. It, they're not enterprise SSD drives. Just remember that. Trust me when I tell you. And when you have an enterprise SSD drive, it's a chunk of metal, and it and it knows how to dissipate the heat. So with that being the case, uh, this is option two. Now we'll talk about option three, but we're not going to completely disassemble everything to do option. I'm um, sorry, option three, and that is to remove all of the outer metal compound and structure here to just strictly have the wafer board and then use a static resistant membrane layer on the bottom and set them as wafers and you can put roughly about 12 of them that's just this that's just that wafer board the cooling and the logic all the extra metal that you see here is gone so we'll do one just to show you what that would look like and how I would st set up my stanchions and let me show you stanchions these are basically what we call stanchions. They are extenders that can, they're plastic base, and you can screw them in to create basically supports or struts. Uh, they're pretty easy to assemble, and I have quite a few here. Um, and, you know, I've, I'm going to play with it some, and I have what's called finish off points or tie up points, and I have my double heads, which I can thread down and get rid of all the threading and lock down stuff in accordance. So I'll, I'll show you what that would look like as option three. And then maybe you guys can tell me which one you think would be interesting to do. So hold on for just a minute. Okay, so to do this, the third option, here I have the actual processor board right there. It's been completely depopulated except for the RAM. I mean, sorry, for the CPU. Uh, there's the... Uh, GPU, there's the CPU, there's the RAM bank, the M.2 for Wi-Fi, the M.2 for um, the NVMe uh, SSD drive. Uh, of course, you've got your back ports here, and you've got your front ports here. And uh, this is just an example of this, because now I'm going to have to, if I'm going to do this, I have to stent the connecting heads for the heat sinks, the attachments, and all of that, including the NVMe, to do this. But before I do that, I'm just going to give you an example of what I'm attempting to do here using two of these boards. Um, with this configuration, I'm able to uh, set a wafer style strategy. And if you want to look at it, it would be kind of like this. See how thin that is? Um, you could do quite a bit with this strategy, right? But also you're going to come across with some serious issues. Now this is how it would go. And I'll show you what the, what the stanchions would look like to give you an idea. And that would give you kind of a principle format when I take that logic board and put it with this one and let them stand side by side. And then you guys can tell me what you think. So let me get that done. Okay, so here we have two wafer thin boards. They will have their heat sinks reattached, but I'll probably do something a little bit different on the strategy of keeping airflow on them instead of using something like this. Now this technically will work. It will work just fine. It's just, it's a little bit more, uh, how would you say, lattice based. And so that means it's going to cause some issues. Now, I've taken the memory out of this one because it's my cluster node, and this one is just a straight node. So I want to make sure that I don't mix the two. And I'll show you what this would look like if we attached everything and then used the, these extensions to be able to uh, gap them apart. Stand by. So, as you can see here, not no heatsink and heatsink, 
The way I did this was I used plastic extensions, little ones, that which would thread down on the actual CPU heatsink. Now, the key thing here you've got to remember is this is plastic. So you really can't go crazy on um, tightening it down. It needs to be snug, but not super tight. Now here is where you can go ahead and put this, the core uh, CPU processor on board as such, and you've got yourself a heat sink set up ready to go. Now we'll do that this time in this go around because we'll sh I'll show you the distance and depth on this as we go forward. Uh, for now, we'll, we'll take that off so I can get that set up. So we'll go to the next step and mount this up. Okay, so now here you will see that we have everything set up now in accordance to what we want to do. And if you look, I've only put on the SSD drive and the M.2 slot. No uh, Wi-Fi out of the picture. No VGA bridging. We're going to use strictly the, um, the uh, HDMI interface only. We have strictly just open airflow with the controlled heatsink, we could change that and do it an actual normal CPU heatsink if we wanted to. Uh, we have options with that, that's really cool. And then of course the SATA disk, which will go into the 2.5 inch connection setup. And it will hold its own too, by the way. If you, know, if you look, you'll see that it's fine. And it's still very thin. A little thinner in the sense of airflow and more flow. That's good, that's what you want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a minute and make this guy just like this guy, get it set, and then I'll put the extensions on it so that you can see it in action, okay? Okay, so this is option three. It has all the back-end connectivity back here. We're going to PCB it and also, of course, secure it from any potential outsource grounding, which is a membrane I have to put down here underneath it. It's basically very cut and dry, very simple, but look how many I could fit in a single footprint pretty much two four six eight ten possibly twelve of these in this one footprint that's pretty cool isn't it now if we look closely we'll see that we have stabilized the ssd drives the 2.5 inch drives with an extender here and we can put a small double tight double sided tape here to keep it in place but there's plenty of air circulation between the two points. You could put heat sinks on the NVMe side, as well as giving lots of air circulation for the SSD drives. Then you can run them like crazy with super cheap drives and they'll have pretty good life. Down here is the airflow. It hasn't changed much between the two points, but it's still open flow, which means heat can flow up and heat can flow out. So that's very important. Uh, sucking the air in from the front, blowing it out the back, and of course we still have the convection effect above here which is good because any chip that gets warm on the above this area will actually get that convection effect to help move heat out as well so you guys tell me if you think option one two or three would work i think for cleanliness i would probably go with option one because i don't need a lot of blades right i just need enough to be able to do my proxmox my docker and and things like that that i do with my day job but if I really wanted to build this out and I had another four or five hundred dollars, I could do that. I could make 12 blades here, run off of this on two separate blocks of 15 amp outputs, and uh, I would have myself a pretty sweet little deal. So, with that being said, we have the opportunity to be able to take this to a new step. Uh, you give me an idea what you think. I didn't have to chisel up any uh, metal, I didn't have to eat anything up, I didn't have to spit anything out. I basically got everything working the right way in a very simple format. So with that being said, um, I could still put all this back together and would still connect up and be at option one or option three. So you guys tell me what you think I should do next and then we'll pick it up from there and take it to the next step. Now voting matters, so please like the video if you like it and uh, we will see what the end result will be. God bless and have a great week.